Hello, I'm Lee Livengood. I play clarinet and bass clarinet in the Utah Symphony. And for the last 20 years, I have been a refacer, restorer, and maker of woodwind mouthpieces. In this series of videos, I want to talk about mouthpieces and give you some basic information about how mouthpieces work, how they are worked on, and how they're restored, and maybe give you some ideas that will help you understand your mouthpiece better and be able to better choose and take care of your mouthpiece. To start off with, I will show you some components of the clarinet mouthpiece so you can understand how it functions. So here we have a clarinet mouthpiece and let me describe a couple of the components on the mouthpiece to help you better understand how it works. The facing is the main thing we want to talk about and the facing on the mouthpiece has a number of areas. At the top here is the tip rail and on each side we have the side rails and then this area here is called the table. Your reed lies on the table and then the rails gradually curve away from the back of the reed. How that curve runs is what makes the facing. It can curve a great deal, it can curve a small amount, it can be a very long curve, it can be a short curve. There are infinite variations in how the mouthpiece curves away from the reed. That's what describes your facing and that's what makes it play in different ways. A few other areas to consider that are important is inside here, this area is called the baffle. This area is also, this is called the window. That's where your air goes into the mouthpiece. And looking from the bottom of the mouthpiece, going in here, this is called the bore of the mouthpiece. And it's a slightly conical shape. And that is has a lot to do with the sound and the intonation on your mouthpiece. So those are some of the basic components of the clarinet mouthpiece. These are some of the tools that we use when working on mouthpieces. Up here, first we have a bore gauge. It will tell me the size of the bore where it exits the mouthpiece and it is engraved in increments so that I can see what the number is when I use that. Uh, the next piece here, this is a piece of glass. It's also engraved in millimeter increments and we lay that on the facing to help us both judge how the curve is and the tip opening. Here is a tip wand. You can see this is engraved in hundredth of millimeter increments and that's generally how we measure mouthpiece in millimeters. For example, 1.05 is 1.05 millimeters. Here are feeler gauges, starting from thick to thin. They allow us to plot points on the curve so we can see how the curve is running over the length of the facing. In here I have a few different files and I generally use the files for adjusting the rails and making adjustments in the baffle and the chamber of the mouthpiece. Underneath is a piece of sandpaper. We use varying grits of sandpaper to help cut the facing on the mouthpiece and all of that is resting on a sheet of plate glass which gives me a hard flat surface to work against when making the facings. And now I'm going to show you how I measure the facing on a mouthpiece. The tools I use for this were developed by Eric Brand in the early 1900s. And so we have your mouthpiece. This is a piece of glass that's been etched with millimeter increments. I lay the glass on the facing of the mouthpiece and line it up with the top. This next tool is called the tip wand. It is also engraved in a hundredth of millimeter increments. We take the tip wand, slide it along the glass, 
and where it stops on this mouthpiece it's 102 which means 1.02 millimeters so that tells me the opening on the tip to gauge the rest of the facing we're essentially plotting four points because if you remember it's a curve starts from the open part and gradually goes to nothing so we have four feeler gauges starting with a thicker one and that will give me a number which for this system is a six on this mouthpiece the second one gives me a 12 third gauge 22 and last gauge 34. the other thing these gauges will tell me is if the facing is even on each side if a gauge were to land with one side much lower than the other like this i would know the facing was not even on each side and for my style of mouthpieces i would want to correct that so that i could get the rails even on both sides one final thing that we often measure is the bore of the mouthpiece, what the size is, where the bore exits the mouthpiece. For that, I have a bore gauge, and that also is engraved with measurement increments. You can slide that into the bore and where that stops. This is not metric, this one is English system, 0.588 inches is the exit bore on the mouthpiece. So that's how we measure a mouthpiece. So now I want to show you a couple of the ways that we might work on a mouthpiece. If, it, if I was finishing it or if it needed to be restored or we were making a facing adjustment for someone. Now working on a mouthpiece I usually describe to people as being like sculpture. You have your medium which is the hard rubber mouthpiece and you can only take material away and we do that in a couple of different ways one you can see here I have a sheet of plate glass and on top of it is a sheet of sandpaper and what I would do if I was adjusting the facing is drag the mouthpiece along the sandpaper and let me see if I can show you that you pull the mouthpiece and as you pull I'm tilting the mouthpiece a little bit depending on where I want to cut on the facing of the mouthpiece. If the mouthpiece were too open also I could drag the entire mouthpiece across the paper which would close down the facing. If I need to open it up I'll probably pull more on the front of the mouthpiece and angle the end up in order to take more material off the facing towards the front. So that's one way we adjust the mouthpiece. Another thing that I often do is use a series of files if I'm trying to work inside the mouthpiece. If I'm working in the chamber, if I'm adjusting the rails, frequently I'll use files to adjust the shaping and to take out some material there. I also sometimes will take a file and wrap sandpaper on it and that allows me to do adjusting inside the chamber of the mouthpiece. So those are some of the basic ways of refacing and adjusting a mouthpiece.